Lords of Rusty Promotions, coming to you with a quick update about our up and coming event at the Coombe Abbey Hotel in Coventry, the ultimate self-defense experience with Mr. Jeff Thompson. Now myself and my uh, business partner, Russ Jarmusty, when I met with Jeff uh, recently at the uh, Coombe Abbey Hotel, where we'll be holding the event in March next year, just to have a chat about all things self-defense and to give you guys a little bit of insight about just exactly what Jeff will be talking about on the day of the event. Enjoy. Hey, good evening. So, I'll be Russ for today. Um, we're talking about the Rusty Promotions event that we've got on in March. And I said the first ever event we put on, there's only one person I'd invite down. And um, that's Mr. Jeff Thompson himself. Good evening, sir. Good evening, um, thank you. We, we've, we've been speaking for quite a little bit of a while. He, he messed one of my birthdays up, so this is why he's doing the event for us to kind of to settle the the karma <laughs> that, that he messed up years ago with my birthday. Um, he wrote me. He sent me a book. Um, the missus asked him for a book, signed, and then he rung up to confirm which book it was. But I answered the phone call, so it was the best birthday I had. That Jeff, it was it was great having a chit chat to you. And um, so we've got this rusty promotions event in, in this venue where we are now, um, Coombe Abbey. You come here quite a lot. Yeah, well, I was born in Coventry and I, I lived here for nearly 60 years. So I was up here yeah. most days, yeah. And all my events I, I did here because it's a, well, it's an old monastery. So it's got a great energy, especially for where we're all heading now, which is more towards the Buddha, you know. Yeah, you can tell it's got an energy. It's got the kind of energy where I go outside and I feel like I've got to go to the car park to smoke. It's a beautiful place. It's energy. It's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> it place, but it's a proper monastery. Yeah. And I used to do my walks and talks. I used to hold them in the chapel. There's a little chapel in the restaurant. So it's very fitting we've come here then for Perfect, our first yeah, rusty event. Perfect. And the rooms are fantastic, aren't they? They're really luxury. Yeah. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a lovely place. It's got a great energy. So but yeah, 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 I'm interested on that last day on the doors then as well. Yeah. Um, what was what was yeah, it? It's interesting. It was kind of like um, it was like a pivotal moment, but it was also nothing because it was. Um, it was like you think there's going to be this big fanfare because for me it wasn't just a change of job it was a change it was a change of paradigm it was a change mm -hmm. of density and you think there's going to be i'll tell you what it is there was no celebration there was no uh, great to work there's none of that okay. it was just like because everybody i ever worked with was always leaving the door and that's what we did how many times did you leave that was the first that was the only time i left oh you did it first yeah, time the first time but everybody else I worked every with doorman in the world always would, leaving yeah. yeah every doorman would say that's hard car i had three attempts yeah. to leave here's how i managed to leave <laughs> when i realized i weren't leaving i said to the missus i'll do five years to get the experience so i can teach honestly what yeah. i'm doing that went out the window 10 year mark you're leaving, okay, but well, I have a few little things to tie up. I think I knew the violence then, but I didn't know myself enough to walk away in spits. Yeah. We get to the last bit, I had three leaving events. On the last one, I said to every door lad that worked with me, we'll have a leaving do. You give me 50 quid each, and if ever I come back, I have to pay. So I, I priced myself <laughs> out of the game. <laughs> Loads turned up, so um, yeah, I had three attempts to leave. So to leave first time round. Yeah, you... I mean, when I left my factory job to, to train full time and write full time, that took me three goes. Because okay. I, did, I didn't know how to leave a proper job. Yeah, nice. I didn't know how to leave conventional employment. So I kept wandering back into conventional work yeah. until eventually I realised, you know, this is no good. And a lot of it was my friends around me just saying, I've got a job, do you want to come and do it? So I was a builder. But with the door, I think they just thought I was just going to be another guy that was going to leave and come back two yeah. weeks later because it's, you know, it's a very addictive job. Mm. But it's interesting as well because I found myself on the very last night. There was a lot of fear there because I'm thinking, I'm leaving tonight. Is Wait is something going to kick off? Do people know? Do the energies know that I'm leaving? Uh -huh. And I was suddenly talking to the, these two guys. One of them was a big lump, and I was looking at him and talking. He was talking to him. He was really familiar, and he's with another guy who was quite a legendary guy in Coventry. And um, he, he, I was just talking away to him. He was really familiar, and I just said to him, "Where do I know? Where do I know you from?" And his friend said, oh, he's, he's Mr. H, the guy you knocked out in Watch Your Back. And I said, oh. I was going to say, was he one yeah. of the first? And I just said, uh, this is the night I was leaving. I said, so. That's full circle. I said, why why did you come into the nightclub and pick a fight with me? I said, oh. he goes, oh, I was, I was just a wanker. Mm. To forgive the language. But he just said, that's what that's where I was. And he said, and you give me what was you. Did he ever say, 
that punch saved my life. You see, I've had a few come back saying thank you so much. I have had that, but I didn't have it with him. Okay. This guy uh, died tragically some years later. He was a he was a proper. If he was going to do a drawing of a crook, I know. this was what he was. Yeah. He was very charismatic. Everything. I've very invented. handsome guy. Big lump. Um, very funny. Very all the, all of the kind of twisted virtues that he had. But he was a, he was an out and out criminal. When I had my in, my incident with him, he got me arrested for section eighteen. He was going in for the compo, and he lost <laughs> all, all credibility. Everybody <laughs> in the criminal world yeah. fell away. I'm going to be him. a bad boy between eleven and twelve. Yeah, <laughs> he, he lost so much credibility because yeah, people are going, God, if he's going to go to the police over a fight, mm -hmm. what's he going to do with the other stuff? So I mean, he died. He died some years later, tragically. I won't go into the detail, but a lot, yeah. of the, a lot of the guys I dealt with, a lot of the bigger criminals died quite tragically. Mm. Um, so the last night was uh, kind of a non-event really, it just dis right. dissipated. But for me, it was like, you know, I haven't got to look over my shoulder all the time. Yeah. One guy came and uh, this wasn't the last night, but I made, them, I made the fatal error of doing a celebrity night on the, on the door, what they called a celebrity night, like I'd written the book and I was, there was a little bit of notice around me. And this guy says, we're doing this charity event, will you come and just be kind of like a token doorman because you wrote the book? And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And it was a mistake, because I think once you leave, you shouldn't go back. Yeah. But uh, some guy was stood by me, you know, for about two hours. And I said, what, what are you waiting for? What are you standing there for? And he says, I'm waiting to see you go. Oh, and I yeah. said, well, give me another half hour, I said, and I will be going, I'll be going out. Oh. <laughs> I said, that's the only go you're going to see. But it, mm. after the book came out, I was still working the doors, after Watch My Back came out. Was you? Yeah, I was still working, I was right. still on the door. There I've got radio, attention there. I've got Radio 1 coming down, I've got the uh, television okay. coming down. But I couldn't work, because I'd got, just with this, this book was only, only sold a couple of thousand at the beginning. Yeah. But even just with that, and because I've been on the telly and that, People were wandering down from other cities just to look. I was like in a goldfish bowl. Yes. And then of course, it's impossible to work because uh, if anything happens, it's like it was the guy that wrote the book. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I stepped away from it, but it was, uh, it was an interesting thing because writing the book was a bit like, it kind of ruffled feathers like a fox in a, in a, you know, in a chicken pen, you know, it was like everybody was suddenly either loved it or they hated it. Every doorman you know? in town would have gone, who the see thing yeah, he is? Yeah. I'm the man. Yeah. Every criminal will, in the lots will go, you reckon you yeah. can do us? Of course, you're in there as well. Yeah. You've written got... about them. Yeah. So they, I, I use pseudonyms. They all knew, all, they all knew, they, they all knew they were in there. Yeah. And I made no bones about it at the time. That's where yeah. I was. And I kind of said, well, you know, yeah. if you want to come and see me, you know where I am. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of attention and I had to, I had to step away, but that was freeing really, because like I said, it was, yeah. I was able to go out and concentrate more on the training, uh, concentrate more on my, on building a business. Cause at the moment, at that time I was about the, I was trying to earn money. I was, uh, you know, I was trying to build the martial arts stuff. I was doing hundreds, well, thousands of articles, you know. Yeah, you was. Yeah, you was. So was. You were the only person to know. Um, uh, yeah, well, at the time I was, you know, I wasn't the, even the best doorman on my door. Mm. You know, I was a guy that wrote the book. Everything I wrote in the book was mm. true, but I was working with guys who were my teachers, you yeah. know, like people like John Anderson, and I wasn't the best guy on the door, let alone in the town. Mm -hmm. But um, but you could articulate it. I could articulate it. it had, yeah. yeah, I could articulate it, and I understood. I understood enough to. I went into the exegesis of what was happening to me. I went into the detail of why, about adrenaline, about fear, about cause and effect, about what worked and You what went into work. this job with a total different mentality yeah. to 90% of all. And yeah, I, I went in there to overcome my fears. Yeah. I wanted to understand it. I was curious. Yeah. I remember when I went on the doors and I looked around, I went purposely for the long, the same reasons. I'm going to teach for the rest of my life and I need to teach to honestly. The biggest question was, in my head, you could kill everyone and do everything and you're no fear. And I just needed to know if that was true. If that was true. So, yeah. yeah, so I put it on then. Like I said, that, and is this art as deadly as I'm being told it is? Yeah, I mean, am I capable? Does it all match? Does it make sense? Um, so I think when I went on the doors, I, I, I knew that wasn't my career. It was a it was a blip to take me somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So, so I completed it a little bit cleaner than the other door lads. Yeah. Because 
for me, you'd look up to a lot of them and think he's a living God. Then you'd go and meet them afterwards when they've been 15 years on the door. See, they're living in like a little bed sit. Yeah. And yeah. you'd think, hold on a minute. Some, some Destroyed of lives. Yeah, it was a... I don't think I know any doorman that went the whole lot. They went, this is dead. I don't have a drink or drug problem. Yeah. So I think they went in, they were very good at violence. They just never managed to break it all down to get to a yeah. point where they could walk away. And um, the transferable skills that you can take onto other things. Because yeah. the courage and the insight yes. led me onto all sorts of things. You, you know? can stand here with 10 men on a door. So I don't think an interview is going to worry you, is it? No, there's the context, isn't there? Yeah, there is. you, you just travel that across. I, went on, I remember going on Richard and Judy and someone said, oh man, it's, you know, it's live telly. And I said, listen, you know, worst case scenario, and Richard isn't going to stab me. Yeah. I said, if I look a bit embarrassed on television, I can I've live with that. I've looked embarrassed before. Yeah, yeah, I can live with that. That's okay. He's not going to, he's not going to find out where I live. He's not going to mm-hmm. knock my door at four in the morning, you know. Yeah. It gives you a massive with... freedom that doesn't yeah. to walk, walk through the world. And you realise as well that the truth I've found uh, on this shitty little Coventry nightclub, a place I'd love, they don't mean that in a derogatory no, no, sense, no, 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 but no, no, it was no, just a, it was just a non-local yeah. place. I was able to take that all around the world because mm-hmm. the, the knowledge I found, the truth about preemption, about um, the certainty of that, the certainty of causation, that there is, a, there is an effect to every cause mm-hmm. and you have to meet it at some point. Mm-hmm. I, I was especially about dealing with fear, understanding fear, understanding the endocrine system, understanding the power of uh, the sonic power, you know, the power of the voice, the use of the voice, the use of sound. Mm-hmm. All of these things I was learning. It was just a game, wasn't it, the doors? It's a, it's it's a, ga- it's a game of souls, but it's a very dangerous game. Yes, 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 very, yes there's high it's stakes. Very dangerous game. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, to be honest with you, I'm... I'm 30 years away and it's still mm-hmm. unfolding. I'm thinking about writing a book about the Buddha of the bouncer because I learned so much. I recognise that everything that happened on that door was a projection from something in me that I was able 100%. to see manifest and then mm-hmm. work back to the root and fix it. But, you know, I was able to take that. Mm-hmm. Well, people started travelling from all around Britain and from Europe to come and train with us in this, yeah, little, this little club I had. And I started to get invited to the States by Chuck Norris and people like that. But it's because they I love that part in your book when you said your, wife, your, 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 your girlfriend shouted up, Chuck Norris is on the phone. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> his love. So uh, what was it? Tell busy. me, Bruce Lee's <laughs> battle or something. <laughs> yeah. I had yeah. Reggie Cray ringing up as well, exactly the same thing, because yeah. the, the book became quite notorious. It so I was, I, was, I was kind of... Um, whoring the media circus, you know, and mm-hmm. going around and doing talks and selling my books. And I was, and I was on radio shows with Frankie Frazier and, mm-hmm. you know, um, Ronnie Biggs and people like that. And, and uh, Reggie Cray wrote to me and said he loved the book and Charles Bronson wrote to me. So he suddenly, I was attracting these people, but it didn't mm. feel good to me. No, no, it's, it's, it's like going back that. It didn't feel good to me, but it was it was a big noise. It's, and it's it was a nice nod. Very attractive, mm. but when you looked at it, it you know, I, that, I that, just didn't want to be there. That could have given you the split world where you go into well, that and, and do the media yeah. around violence for the rest of your life. Yeah. Or... Well, so what, 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 do you I, do? what I liked was going on and talking about that stuff yeah. and knowing that that was what they was expecting and yeah. knowing that they was going to try and trip me up and I would take it philosophical Absolutely. so i would take it saint paul milarepa yes. and guli uh, and guli marley you know the the the, uh, the murderers who became saints so i started coming from that perspective of listen i can tell you that violence rebounds on itself and that it's not the answer because mm-hmm. i've been there and done it i've lived it this event we're going to have through the day um four guest instructors However, the people that are coming to this event don't think that they're going to be punching pads and stamping on things. It's not that kind of soiree. We are taking it to a little bit of a higher level. We've all been there and done the stamping. Um, you can read any of Jeff's material and you can see that. So we, we, we're obviously going to touch on it. It's very important, um, but we're going to take it to a little bit of a higher level. So when you're training with me, you won't need a uniform on. We don't need geese. We're not ragging anyone around. There's going to be a lot of conversations and talks. With Duncan Andrews, he's got to put a nice few scenarios on, and with the other guests as well. So you people coming for the full event, don't worry about having to have a fight in the afternoon and then go for a black tie event with a black eye. That's not going to happen. Um, but we have managed to secure Mr. Jeff Thompson. Um, the event is in March. We have got 60% of the tickets sold. 
Um, and if you miss this one, I mean, you, you're just stupid. I really wouldn't miss it. Um, I've been talking with Mr. Jeff for about an hour now. Had a good conversation. Yeah. I, I could talk all day with you. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> so when we have this event, and we're on stage for, for an hour or two. Yeah. Um, if it runs over time, they can all piss off and we'll just carry on. Just be me and you. Done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in fact, I'm not even fussed if anyone comes down. <laughs> Stay away. Um, but yeah, get, 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 get in touch if you want to, because we have got 40 left, I think it is, or 35 of them left. Um, and it's, it's going to be a day to remember. Um, so it's been a good morning to remember. The day is going to be outstanding. Um, so we'll see you all there. Um, I can't yeah. wait for this. I know a lot of people will think about putting it off, but these events happen. Mm. It's, you know, it might happen every year, but it might only happen once. So you just, you just say to people, if you want to do this thing, come and do it. Because yeah. I can't tell you whether it's going to be here next year or the year after with my own class. And I used to say, this is here now, you've created it now, come and do it, because yeah. it might not be here again. Grab it while you can. Yeah. It's going to be a good day. I think it's going to be brilliant. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for it.